Now this right here is a very interesting star system. It's around 63 light years away from planet Earth, and it's also a relatively young star system with a very unusual shape. But this is not why we're talking about this today. Today we're talking about Beta Pictoris, as this system is known, for a completely different reason. Hello wonderful person, and today we're discussing the first ever visual confirmation of existence of an exoplanet that was previously discovered a completely different method. And this is a very exciting confirmation for one important reason. We now have a very important technique that allows us to establish the existence of an exoplanet by looking at it directly, having discovered it using some other method. And although this sounds easy, it's actually extremely difficult to achieve. And I wanted to discuss some of the details of this study to kind of explain to you why it's so hard. So first of all, this system is pretty interesting for many reasons. It's one of the younger systems out there, it's roughly around 23 million years old. It also contains one of the largest protoplanetary disks we've discovered so far, and has a lot of activity on the inside with tons and tons of infrared light coming from it. We may also have discovered comets or some other objects orbiting the star in the past, and when this was announced a few years ago, this was a huge discovery. This was essentially a confirmation that similar objects to the ones we find in the solar system can exist somewhere else. But most importantly, the larger planet here, the one on the outskirts, was essentially one of the first objects we were able to directly observe and pinpoint to be an exoplanet orbiting another star. Now, because the star here is what's known as an A-type star, or an extremely bright object with some of the most luminous and hottest conditions you can imagine, seeing anything else around the star is a little bit difficult. It's so bright that its brightness covers pretty much everything in the vicinity. But this planet, that's at least 10 to possibly even 13 masses of Jupiter, with the orbital parameters very similar to Saturn in the solar system, was not as difficult to see because it was much farther from the star. This is sort of how this planet compares to some of the other objects we're familiar with, including of course planet Earth right here. But roughly around a year ago, in August of 2019, the scientists looking at the data from the star system discovered another unusual parameter that suggested another planet. The planet that they refer to as Beta Pictoris C, and this planet seemed to have been much closer to the star, orbiting in the same region where we currently have the asteroid belt. Now, this is actually really interesting because in the creation of the solar system theories, we kind of think that this is where Jupiter was as well initially, and then it moved to the outskirts. And so the announcement of this planet was pretty exciting to um, kind of confirm various theories we have on the creation of the solar system, but more importantly, it now created a very exciting opportunity to try to see if we can use other techniques to try to find this planet visually, which is exactly what the scientists behind this paper in the description below decided to do. They decided to use the European Southern Observatory's gravity instrument attached to one of the telescopes in Chile to try to visually confirm this planet by using the orbital parameters from the previous paper to then try to predict where this planet would be located in the star's orbit. And it's honestly not a very easy task because you do need to have a lot of data collected about the planetary orbit to try to discover it again. And the reason it's so difficult to try to find this planet again is because originally it was discovered using radial velocity method. It's when we're looking at the star and we're seeing it wobble a little bit and we can kind of tell what's making it wobble, but we're not entirely sure what the orbit of the planet is. With the main difficulty being that you don't really know where the planet is exactly. You can only kind of estimate its location based on how you're seeing the star move. And so based on only these observations and the data produced from the original paper from last year, over the period of several months, the scientists in this paper were able to create these images showing us a very specific location where this planet passed, producing the first ever image of a rediscovered planet. Now obviously this is not maybe as exciting as seeing the image of a surface of a planet, or even just seeing something like this, because this is just a simulation of what this planet might look like. But in terms of the modern technology, this is a huge achievement. This is essentially as good as it gets right now, in our ability to see various exoplanets out there. And so in some sense, this is quite groundbreaking. And this technique will definitely be used again to try to image some other planets, possibly even some that are much closer to us. 
And because of these observations, we now have much more accurate parameters of this planet, including its total brightness, including its total mass, and of course, a lot of other stuff that we didn't know before. So for example, now we know that this planet is around 8.2 masses of Jupiter. We also know that it orbits the star roughly around 3.4 years per orbit. But also surprisingly, we know that it's much fainter than initially assumed. In other words, it doesn't seem to produce as much heat or as much temperature as the scientists expected. And the reason why we think it should have been producing a lot more heat is simply because that this is a very, very brand new planet. It's only about, and by the way, this is in relative terms, of course, 18 million years old. This is a baby planet. A typical planet of this size and this mass and the location in the star system should have temperature around 2000 Kelvin. Its farther partner or its neighbor, for example, has the temperature around 1700 degrees. But Victoria C seems to have a temperature of about 1200 degrees Kelvin, which still makes it pretty hot. It's, it's still a very hot uh, gas giant, but not as hot as the scientists expected it to be. And the reason for this is most likely due to the way that this planet was created. This is a pretty interesting discovery because what it suggests is that this planet was created differently from its partner. A very common method for these large, very massive planets to be created is known as disk instability method. Essentially, due to certain instabilities in part of the disk, this tiny focal point becomes the center for a tremendous amount of mass to suddenly start becoming pulled into it growing larger and larger and more massive, eventually turning into a gas giant or even a brown dwarf. More often, planets like this are not expected to have a very solid core, and most importantly, planets like this are often expected to be very, very hot. This image and video from the Swiss National Supercomputing Center kind of shows you that we've been able to simulate these creations of planets and also we've been able to observe them in different star systems. So we know that this is kind of how a lot of these massive planets are formed. But in the case of Pictoris C, the actual formation might have been different. It might have been very similar to how Earth was formed. In this case, it starts with a solid core that sort of accumulates due to electrostatic effects from tinier particles, which then start gravitating toward one another, building a larger and larger solid core. In other words, they start with smaller asteroids that become larger asteroids, eventually protoplanets, but then if there's a lot of gas in this area, they start accumulating a lot of it and turn into a gas giant. And with time, the gas giant starts growing larger and larger and larger. And this is exactly what the belief happened here, simply because the low temperatures are otherwise very difficult to explain. Which in some sense is really exciting because this star system seems to have two planets that were created using two different methods. And it's also exciting because now we have a technique to visually image different planets that we couldn't see before. And all of this can be achieved simply knowing the initial orbital parameters from other previous discoveries. But most importantly, I really hope that techniques like this can be used in some of the other exciting planets around us. For example, trying to see the nearest exoplanet to us, Proxima Centauri b. Getting an actual visual confirmation and an image from that planet would be super exciting because it would allow us to study the surface, the atmosphere, and a lot of other conditions from Proxima Centauri as well which I'm pretty sure is going to happen in the next few years. Because trying to study the closest and the most exciting planet to us and seeing its atmosphere, its temperature, its composition, and of course its mass would allow us to finally establish if this planet and other planets like it could potentially host life. Or if it's some sort of a inhospitable, extremely difficult to survive on planet. So hopefully in the next few years, we'll have some answers. For now though, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.